Hey guys, welcome to Medifaction. So today let's learn about the physiology of transport of gases. So in order to make things easier, I will be discussing about oxygen transportation particularly in this video. And I hope I will be teaching you about the carbon dioxide transportation in my upcoming videos. So let's begin with the transport of oxygen. In this video, I will be enumerating an introduction about transportation of oxygen and the mode of transportation that is a simple solution in combination with hemoglobin and we will be also discussing about the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. We will also talk about the factors affecting oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve and we will know more about Bohr effect. So let's begin. Introduction. We all know that blood serves to transport the respiratory gases. Oxygen which is essential for the cells is transported from alveoli of lungs to the cells. Carbon dioxide which is the waste product in cells is transported from cells to the lungs. Transport of oxygen. Oxygen is transported from alveoli to the tissue by blood in two forms. Number one is as simple physical solution. Number two is in combination with hemoglobin. So as simple solution. Oxygen dissolves in water of plasma and transported in the physical form. Amount of oxygen transported in this way is very negligible. It is only 0.3 milliliter per 100 milliliter of plasma. It forms only about 3% of total oxygen in blood. It is because of poor solubility of oxygen in water content of plasma. Still, transport of oxygen in this form becomes important during the conditions like muscular exercise to meet the excess demand of oxygen by the tissues. Next, in combination with hemoglobin, oxygen combines with hemoglobin in blood and is transported as oxyhemoglobin. Transport of oxygen in this form is important because maximum amount that is 97 percentage of oxygen is transported in this method. Oxygenation of hemoglobin. Oxygen combines with hemoglobin only as physical combination. It is only oxygenation and not oxidation. This type of combination of oxygen with hemoglobin has got some advantages. Oxygen can be readily released from hemoglobin when it is needed. Hemoglobin accepts oxygen readily whenever the partial pressure of oxygen in the blood is more. Hemoglobin gives out oxygen whenever the partial pressure of oxygen in the blood is less. Oxygen combines with the iron in the heme part of the hemoglobin. Each molecule of hemoglobin contains 4 atoms of iron. Iron of hemoglobin is present in ferrous form. Each iron atom combines with one molecule of oxygen. After combination, iron remains in ferrous form only. That is why combination of oxygen with hemoglobin is called oxygenation and not oxidation. Oxygen carrying capacity of hemoglobin. Oxygen carrying capacity of hemoglobin is the amount of oxygen transported by 1 gram of hemoglobin. It is 1.34 milliliter per gram. Oxygen carrying capacity of blood. Oxygen carrying capacity of blood refers to the amount of oxygen transported by blood. Normal hemoglobin content in blood is 15 gram percentage. Since oxygen carrying capacity of hemoglobin is 1.34 milliliter per gram, blood with 15 gram of hemoglobin should carry 
20.1 ml of oxygen that is 20.1 ml of oxygen in 100 milliliter of blood but blood with 15 gram of hemoglobin carries only 19 milliliter of oxygen that is 19 milliliter of oxygen is carried by 100 milliliter of blood oxygen carrying capacity of blood is only 19 milliliter percentage because the hemoglobin is not fully saturated with oxygen it is saturated only for about 95 percentage saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen saturation is the state or condition when hemoglobin is unable to hold or carry any more oxygen saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen depends upon partial pressure of oxygen and it is explained by oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve now let's learn more about this oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve is the curve that demonstrates the relationship between partial pressure of oxygen and percentage saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen this is the graph and this is the y-axis which shows the percentage saturation of the hemoglobin this is the x-axis showing partial pressure of oxygen in millimeter mercury it explains hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen normally in the blood hemoglobin is saturated with oxygen only up to 95 percentage saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen depends upon the partial pressure of oxygen when the partial pressure of oxygen is more hemoglobin accepts oxygen and when the partial pressure of oxygen is less hemoglobin releases oxygen the red line here shows the normal oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve it may tends to shift to left and also shift to right at particular conditions this right here is the percentage saturation at 50 percentage now let's learn about what is p50 p50 right here is the partial pressure of oxygen at which hemoglobin saturation with oxygen is 50 percentage when the partial pressure of oxygen is 25 to 27 millimeter of mercury the hemoglobin is saturated to about 50 percentage this right here is approximately 25 to 27 that is the partial pressure of oxygen at 50 that is the blood contains 50 percentage of oxygen at this time at 40 millimeter of mercury of partial pressure of oxygen the saturation is right here it corresponds to 75 percentage it becomes 95 when the partial pressure of oxygen is 100 mm hg now let's see what are the factors affecting oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve so oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve is shifted to left or right by various factors number one shift to left indicates acceptance or association of oxygen by hemoglobin the shift to right indicates dissociation of oxygen from hemoglobin now let's see the shift to right oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve is shifted to right in the following conditions number one decrease in partial pressure of oxygen number two increase in partial pressure of carbon dioxide it is known as the ball effect number three increase in hydrogen ion concentration and which leads to decrease in ph or acidity number four is increased body temperature number five is excess of 2,3 diphosphoglycerate in rbc it is also called 2,3 bisphosphoglycerate the dpg 
is a byproduct of emden merhof pathway which is seen in carbohydrate metabolism it combines with beta chains of hemoglobins in conditions like muscular exercise and in high altitude the dpg increases in rbc so the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve shifts to right to a great extent due to the following these following reasons shift to left oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve is shifted to left in the following conditions number one in fetal blood fetal hemoglobin has more affinity for oxygen than the adult hemoglobin number two decrease in hydrogen ion concentration and increase in ph which leads to alkalinity this is where it shifts to right this is where it shifts to left a simple chart now let's learn about the bohr effect bohr effect is the effect by which presence of carbon dioxide decreases the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen in the tissues due to continuous metabolic activities the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is very high and the partial pressure of oxygen is low due to this pressure gradient carbon dioxide enters the blood and oxygen is released from the blood to the tissues presence of carbon dioxide decreases the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen it enhances further release of oxygen to the tissues and oxygen dissociation curve is shifted to right factors influencing bohr effect all the factors which shift the oxygen dissociation curve to right enhance the bohr effect hope you have understood the video like subscribe and press the bell button for more videos thank you thanks for watching